be inventive because it's not just about a fight or, or uh, surviving things. It's, it's how you do it. And that's what I knew that I need to be inventive to fight and stand stand uh, out from all the other action stuff. And try try to create something your own, your own way of dealing because there's millions of ways of doing this kind of things. You just have to find your own and uh, not copying anyone else. As of now, the film Sizu has been released in theaters and is now playing worldwide. And today we get the amazing opportunity to talk to the director, Jalmari Hellander, all the way in Finland and get a behind the scenes deep dive of this film. And I gotta say, this is truly one of my favorite action movies that I've seen all year. And what an honor it was to pick his brain. So great to meet you today. Um, absolutely love this film. I feel like kind of these days, it's like far in between when we get a high quality action movie such as uh, Sizu. And I kind of want to just know like um, a bit of like your inspiration to create this story. It's there, basically. <laughs> Sly, eh? <laughs> Rambo. <laughs> yeah, first blood. And uh, yeah, I have, I don't know why, but I, I've had this long, uh, long ago a dream of making an action film. Because in Finland, we don't have like a tradition to make any action films. So a lot of people have been laughing at me when I was young to have that kind of a uh, thing. But they're not laughing anymore. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Hell yeah. And it's so well done. And even as uh, advertised in the trailer, it says uh, made with the studio who produced John Wick, too. So obviously mm. it's going to be crazy high quality and everything. And I kind of want to know your experience of having them help you bring your vision to life. When I wrote the script and we sent it to uh, Sony and, uh, and all the other finances uh, we it will it was important to have a freedom to do this kind of film how we wanted to do it so basically we were in a way on our own to do this when they stepped in they really helped with the uh, like the post production kind of stuff and and like um uh, of course distributing this but basically it's made here in finland with the finnish crew and uh and uh just the way we wanted cool cool and um even like one thing i thought that uh was really shining throughout the film were the characters and the people who the actors with especially the dynamic with the leads where uh the one guy uh the main guy doesn't talk at all and even uh the from like the the head Nazi guy and stuff like that and I just kind of want to know like a little bit about the dynamic on the set because it just seemed uh I don't know they, they seem just so excellent at what they do well they are great actors and and uh when, when we did some like a test shoot of how the clothes and and the makeup and stuff like that starts to work out uh it was clear that uh, Axel and Yorma they're gonna be like a really good good like a good and evil guy to this film and and uh, we had a lot of fun with them also with the 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 uh, the final fight in the airplane where these guys because we didn't use so much stunt work on on that scene wow so they really wanted to do themselves the whole thing and <laughs> It was terrifying to watch because I was sure that somebody will die for real. But <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, kind of insane to know a little like fun fact about the film too. And did they uh, suffer any injuries throughout this? Because it was like a very like physical scenes all over the place. Yeah, actually, actually on that fight scene, he uh, got his head because he accidentally stepped into the hole 
where the bomb was supposed to fall. Oh. He stepped in and <laughs> hit his head to uh, uh, the steel bench and uh, a huge cut here, straight to the hospital. And he came back like uh, after two hours with the stitches on his head and okay, let's continue. And, and I was like, maybe you are not doing anything today. <laughs> if, more, if we continue tomorrow, it probably would be wise. I like that spirit though. It's like a true badass. Yeah. You know, some some actors don't uh, live the part, but it sounds like this guy's the real deal, you know? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And even uh I think the big star for me of the film was the dog as well. I just <laughs> adored that that animal. And uh even I, I kind of want to know a little bit about uh that being on the set and directing the animal. Was it uh was he easy to work with or <laughs> anything like that? He was easy and he was hard. Uh, yeah. There were days when uh, he really didn't want to do anything, and 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 they had a, they had a problem with the horse. They they didn't want to be in the same shot because they were starting to uh, argue, and and it looked <laughs> like the the horse will kill the dog pretty soon, and, <laughs> and uh, so th we had to use a lot of different kind of things in the edit to put. <laughs> <laughs> put these two characters in the same shot. Uh, but mainly the dog was really good, what, what he did. The horse wasn't, but let's not go into that road now. Yeah, well, that's kind of a fun fact of the film, especially because we, when you see it on the screen, they're buddies, they're a team. But uh, yeah, that extra layer, I really appreciated that. But um yeah, also, like, just knowing, like, you have this great crew, great cast, and, like, all the pieces to put this story and do it proper together. Uh, what was, like, your favorite scene to direct or something you had the most fun creating? Well, that's that's a lot of answers for that question. But what really is was a nice scene to make was... Um, when when Adami rides his horse and he sees the Nazis for the first time, uh, when they encounter on the road and and uh, everyone laughs at Adami and and uh, how well Axel is acting when he's just looking at him when he rides past him and uh, because it was so, so nice to have not any dialogue on that scene also just. Just like an old school movie kind of mm -hmm. thing, it, it was really cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. And uh, just final question, because uh, a lot of creators um, and inspiring directors actually watch and listen to these segments I do right now. And uh, I just want to know if you have any, like, just little advice or, or like tips uh, for people who are trying to create a, a really good action scene. Well, I would say lose the dialogue and be inventive because it's not just about a fight or or or, the, or, or uh, surviving things. It's it's how you do it, and that's what I knew that I need to be inventive to fight and stand stand uh, out from all the other action stuff. Try try to create something your own your own way of dealing because there's millions of ways of doing this kind of things you just have to find your own and uh not copying anyone else yeah well said well said well i want to thank you for your time today um genuinely love this movie i watched the screener a little early on my computer and i'm actually excited to see it on the big screen where i believe this is the proper experience to see a movie like Sizu. And yeah, once again, thanks for the time. And uh, I'm looking forward to whatever you got going on next because I'm a new fan. Yeah, it's a definitely a totally different ball game to watch this film in a movie theater because I've seen it in, in a lot of different movie theaters and of course from a TV also, but how it transforms into a totally different kind of piece when you see it on a big screen and hear all the sounds and and uh, which we really use time and effort to make 
make it as cool as possible because we don't talk that much. So I wanted it to be like as alive as possible, the whole whole thing. Yeah, it was so well done and amazing. Once again, great to meet you. Hope you enjoy the rest of your media day and uh, maybe catch you on your next project. Yeah, definitely. Thanks again to Joe Mari for taking the time. And like we mentioned, Sizu is now playing everywhere across the world in theaters. And that's the way you should see it. I can't stress it enough. If you're into action in absolute chaos, this is a must see of 2023. And before we ride off in the sunset on a motorcycle strapped with weapons and a poodle in the sidecar, we gotta thank all you legends on the Patreon page for supporting the show. And first up, and first up, big thanks to Mike Carniello of the Testing with Mike YouTube channel, Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd, Ryan Watkins of Ryan Radio, the wonderful Jenny Potter, the legendary Devin McBride, Ryan frickin' Campbell, my favorite soul singer, Saber, and last but not least, Francis Copper, a.k.a. my mom. If you want a shout out at the end of every episode and also get these early, right when I'm done the Zoom call, raw and uncut, I post them, no edits, on patreon.com slash the creative imbalance. You will forever have my thanks. And you also go to bed at night knowing you're a badass motherfucker who supports raw uncut honest independent media and nobody can take that away from you <laughs> all right <laughs> i know this was a short one we got some full length episodes coming for you around the corner and we'll catch you next time Mwah.